Just about all page builders have default price table widgets and they're completely unnecessary. Here's one in Elementor, one in Breakdance, and even one in Bricks. And I remember when I first started using Elementor well over five years ago, these were useful, but so much has changed drastically in all page builders that we now have the complete freedom to create our price cards any way we could imagine. Not only do we have more creative freedom, but we could also create better price cards for our clients that increase their sales and conversions. We're going to build this price card and I'll show you how to follow best design practices that gets better results. I'm even adding in this animated border effect that you could add to your price cards or you could add this to any box on your website really. Let's get started. We're going to build our price card grid right here but first before getting started it's important to have some sort of design inspiration that could guide you into the design direction you want to go to. My go-to favorite place right now currently is the Framer Marketplace. There's just so many talented web designers here creating amazing things. What I usually do is go through the templates, find some inspirations, and I'll gather a handful of them, like these price cards here. And every single one of these, they could be recreated in Elementor, Bricks, Breakdance, really any page builder nowadays with the method of building this out that I am about to show you. The first step, we want to add a container right underneath this paragraph. So I'm gonna go up here, select plus, and then container. And then what you wanna do though is pull up your structure panel because we're gonna to need to rename things and really utilize this panel. I'm gonna call this one grid container. This way it is easy to identify. Then I am going to drop an inner container inside of my grid container. I'm gonna call this one card. And this is going to be my price card. Now the first thing in the grid container, let's change it to a grid. This is really simple. Just go to your container layout, change it to grid. If you're gonna use just two price cards, change it to two, but we're gonna do three. And then I'm just gonna change the row down to one so I could get a good visual of this. Let's go to our card and start to style it up. The first thing, let's add a background color on it. I'm going to just choose something very subtle. I got one already created in my globals. And in fact, you wanna make sure you have all your global colors and global typography set up. If you wanna learn more about globals, just let me know. I'd be happy to create more videos on that. Next, let's go over to border. I'm gonna give it a 12 pixel border. I'm just doing pixels right now to go fast, but I would convert all of these to RAM to do it properly. I just wanna speed things up. So this isn't a super long video. Now, next up, let's go to our border type, select on solid. I'm gonna add a one pixel border and again, I got a border color global. Now let's go over to advance and add in some padding. I'm gonna put 16 pixels on the sides and 32 on the top and bottom. And we could always come back and adjust it. Now the card is pretty much ready to go. We just wanna add in our elements and we are gonna keep things a bit boring at first. Then we're gonna come back and make them more exciting. So let's start dropping in our elements. We're first gonna need to add in our price plan name. We'll duplicate this. This will be our plan description. We'll duplicate it again. This will be the actual price. Then I am going to add a button. I'm going to add another heading. Let's drop that below. And then I am going to add in an icon list. And then we could add anything else later on as we are building this if something was missed. But real quick, I did create just a quick guide. You could screenshot this and keep it for yourself, but we have what is actually needed. And then we have other elements that you could add. You see, right now, imagination is the limit. We could do so much when it comes to building these, adding tool tips, toggles, you know, tags, icons, dividers. So there's a lot that we could do. First, we are gonna keep it simple and then we are going to build on top of it. So let's go ahead and set up each of these. First up, the plan name, let's drop that in. And then I'm going to style this up using my globals, heading medium, that should be good. I do want it to stand out and not be too big. Let me go back here though, and we need to fix up our HTML tags. We're gonna be looking at best practices for design and for semantic HTML as well. This, I'm probably gonna keep it either an H3 or an H4. Depends on the overall page. If it is a small page where, you know, you just got a pricing page and some text on it, and that's it, then I'm gonna leave it at an H3. If it is like on a landing page that has a lot of content, I might move it down to an H4, but for right now, I think H3 fits and works best. Next up, let's give it the description. I am gonna just put in this bit of lorem ipsum. I'm gonna change this to a P tag. Then let's go ahead and style this up. Again, I already got my globals ready. 
Let's go ahead and make this white, but I'm going to give it a little bit of opacity. I do want this to be just a bit more subtle. Next up, let's add in our price and style this up with our globals as well. I'm going to use something a bit bigger, my large heading. Again, I'm going to go back over and set my HTML tag. For the price, we do not want to use an H tag. You could use either a div or a P. Either of them will be fine. I'm going to select on div. Next up, let's go to our button. I'm just going to give it some generic text. Let's go ahead and style it up. We're going to select on stretch. We definitely want the button stretching all the way through, making it really easy for the user to click on. This is going to get more conversions. I'm going to use my globals, set this up. Here is my text color, and I'm just going to do this one really quickly. I'm going to make it stand out. We're going to go to border radius. I'll put in four pixels again always convert this to rim for best practices but for the sake of getting through this video quickly we're going to make it fast i'm going to select the padding on 16 because i want this button to be easy to click on i don't want it too small next up we're going to add in our key features and that's what the bullet list underneath is going to be for this i am going to use an h tag but i'm going to use something that is on the lower end of the hierarchy either an h5 or an h6 i'm going to select on h5 for right now let's go over and style this up again with our globals and now we'll go over to our bullet list usually what i like to do is delete them all except for one personally i like to upload all of my icons let me just put a little icon that i created right here i'll go and style this one up now we'll put 16 i'll put this at eight pixel gap let's go ahead and align this inside of the middle set up our text typography and then from here let me reduce this gap we don't need too much of a gap i'll leave it at two pixels that looks good and then once i get the style looking right i'll duplicate this a few times go back over to our list and give it a little bit of space i want some breathing room i'm gonna take it to either eight or 12 pixels. And then from here, I'm going to go in and add in my list. And I just put in some generic text, but now we have a basic, but still kind of boring, I think, price card. It's not bad. But there's still some things missing. First off, here inside of the price, we need to be able to put in that dash monthly but you see it is really big. Now we have two directions that we could go in here. If you know CSS, then you could create a span tag and style this up with inline CSS. You know, I could put in font size and then I could put it at like a 0.35 M and then I would add in opacity and I would put this at about a 0.5 and let me close the gap. And this is the cleanest approach, but if you don't know CSS, you still have a lot of freedom. Let's drop in a container and we'll call that one price. And then inside of here, let me actually duplicate this. I'll drop that in here. We'll remove this extra bit of span and then we will duplicate it again. Let's go over here now and set this to monthly and adjust our globals. And now from here, we could go to our container, use our flex controls and let's center this. Let's also remove the gaps. I'm just going to put a zero. And if you do want to create more spacing, let's just undo this. We will go to the column and give it a little bit more spacing. We could use something like this. This looks pretty dope. And in fact, what I'm going to do is hide this for right now. Now let's take a look at the title or the name of the plan. To me, this is a bit boring. I want to add an icon. And what we could do here instead of using a heading widget is to use an icon box. So I'm going to drop that in. I'm going to remove this text. And I want to do that because if I do try to use this text, I don't really have that much control. So I want to keep my description separate, but you could combine it if you want. Let's go back over here, give it a name. We'll leave the HTML tag at H3, just like what we did up over here. Let's add in our own icon. I already have a few of them created. Let's go and style this up. We'll push this over to the left. Let's go ahead and give it a spacing. I am going to change this to a negative eight because I want to pull in the description right here. I don't want too much space. I want to create space around my purchase button and my price. Let's go ahead and style this up. I'm going to take this to, let's say a 32 pixel, change our content. We're going to use the same exact size. Let's add in our color and let's go back in, fix our box. 
We'll align this to the bottom. And now we're looking good. Let's go ahead and delete this heading up here. And already we're starting to see now this is starting to get a bit more exciting. Let's now go to our key features. Now, I do want to put a divider here, but I personally do not like using a divider widget. The thing is, we're already using inner containers, and this is an inner container in an inner container. And we need to be very careful and methodical whenever using inner containers because they add more divs, which adds to more DOM and blow. Instead of using something like a divider widget that does add in extra blow, I would just go over to my key features or whatever you're using above your icon list. Go over here to advance, create some padding on the bottom. I'm going to give it 16 pixels. I want the space below my key features here and above the icon list to be even. Let's stay inside of this heading widget. Go down to your border, select on solid, unclick this and just give it one pixel on the bottom. We will give it a color. It's a little bit hard to see. Let me click out. We can see that border now. And in fact, let me just click to the whole thing. And now it's looking pretty good, but I do want some spacing up on the top. So I'm gonna go back over here and let's give it 32 pixels. And now we are looking good. In fact, good enough to go ahead and start duplicating our price cards. That is the next step. Let's go back over here to our structure panel. And I'm just gonna duplicate this two times. We're gonna go now and change our details inside of the plan. I'm gonna do that real quick off screen. And here we go. I just changed the plan name and the icon, changed the prices, updated and added a few more of these benefits or what's included inside of the price plan. Now let's do a few more things to make these really dope and stand out before we create our monthly and annual switcher. We're gonna go over to the outer container. I'm gonna pull up my structure panel now because I wanna make sure I'm targeting the card. So I'm gonna to go to this first card and I'm gonna to go to my style and I'm gonna to go to my background overlay. From here, let's go ahead and select a color. I'm gonna get this blue color and then I am gonna get my secondary background. Let's put this at an angle and I am going to change the location because I just want to cover this corner up over here. Just copy this background and I'm gonna go up over here and paste in the style. All right, that looks dope. And I could make this one pop a little bit more since it is the ultra. Okay, we will do that. I would use my brand guide for sure when choosing the colors, but just wanna show you how easy and quick this is. Now, this next step, you gotta choose which pricing plan you wanna highlight, the one you want people to sign up for most. Which one do you think is gonna perform best? Because we wanna make that one stand out. For this grid right here in this example, we're gonna use our pro plan as our primary plan that we think most people will sign up for. And this is where we're gonna add the animated border. To do this, we do need a CSS snippet that I have a link to inside of the description. You're just gonna copy and paste that CSS snippet into to a code management plugin like what I'm using here with Fluent Snippets. Once you paste this CSS snippet in, there's just a couple things you need to change and it's only gonna be right up here at the top. You don't need to touch anything else below. First off, your border size. Choose whatever size or how thick you want that to look as it goes around your price card. Next up is your border radius. Make sure this matches the border radius of your card. If you're using 20 pixels on your card, then change it to 20 pixels. Next up is the border color. So you can make this highlight to any color that you want. And that's pretty cool because you could really make this stand out. The next one, this is gonna be your background color. And this is very important because using this code snippet is going to remove the background color you set inside of Elementor. So you got to manually add in your background color right here and then your speed. This is going to control how fast or slow you want that animation to go. I think 10 seconds is a good start. You'd leave that S because that S means seconds, but if you want it to go faster, you would just change it to like five seconds. Next up, what you're going to want to do is make sure you got your structure panel open. Go to the card you want to add this to. I'm going to add it in my middle card. Go over to advance, and then we are going to add in this class animated border. We can see the animation is already happening and we can still do more. Let's say this is a free plan. We're just gonna put free. If it's something like that and you really want to drive more attention to 
the plans you really want people to purchase. You could always change the buttons as well. In fact, this is what I would do. I would change the button to something a little bit more subtle. That way you can make the buttons that you really want people to click on. They're the ones that stand out. And this is gonna help you to get more conversions and sales. Now let's add in that monthly yearly switcher and this is gonna be super easy. And I'm gonna put it right down here below the heading. Let's go over to plus search for tabs and drop in your tab. Now, this part's really important. You gotta make sure you have your nested tabs available and active. To do that, it's gonna be your elements or your settings, and then search for the nested elements and make sure that is active. Now, let's go over to our tabs. We're gonna open this up and I'm gonna delete both of these. Let's just work on one and then we'll duplicate it like what we did before. So I'm gonna call this one monthly. The next step would be to style up the tabs and you can make them any way that you like. Again, I would use a design inspiration and use it as a guide. Go through your settings. It does take a little bit of time. And since I already designed one, I'm just gonna paste in my style. We did a lot of styling already on the cards. Really what I wanna show is how we could turn this quickly and easily into an annual and monthly switcher. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. This time I'm gonna call this one yearly. And then we could even add icons. We could do more and really make this one stand out. I'll go ahead and put in that icon. The next thing we're gonna do is take this grid container. Let's just go ahead and right click, copy it. And then I'm gonna go into my first tab here and I'm just gonna paste it. And then we could do that again inside of the second tab. Let's click on the second tab, right click, and paste it. Now this is gonna be for the yearly. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go through each of these and update the content. And then we would update the price. This one I'm gonna give two months off for free. In fact, I'll, let me go up over here and change that text yearly. All right, make that stand out. Just something really simple and quick. And then I will update this and the tab. Okay, it's taking a little bit of time to update, but that's because now things are starting to get a bit heavy. But let's go ahead and publish it and take a look in the front end. And here we have our cards. We can see that this one is really standing out with that border animated and our switchers. Just so easy. Like it is seamless, it is fast. And this is how we could create really cool price cards with switchers and really just have fun with it and let our creativity really shine. I hope you have fun with this one. And I love to see what you create. A great place to do that is inside of our Lightbox Legends community where we can share designs and connect with other web designers. You can check that out. There are links inside the description. Also, you can find the CSS inside of the description as well for the animated border. And if you like design touch like this, then you might wanna check out this video somewhere up over here. I think you'll dig this one. Well, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.